So the GP-led market has become a mainstay in secondaries. Really, over the last, since 2020, 2021, and 2022, it's accounted for almost 50% of annual deal volume. Um, and in 2023, we think it will be something similar, even though the first half of the year, it was slightly down year on year. I think the key drivers for where we are today in the market, it's really, we have to go back to 2021 and look at what happened uh, after that was a record year for private equity um, deal activity and also for exits. In 2022, things changed pretty dramatically and the traditional private equity exit routes like IPOs, the SPAC market, and also M&A, traditional M&A, has really become much more challenged since 2021. And as a result of that, what we've observed is tremendous amount of deal flow coming from GPs into the GP-led market. GPs are turning to the secondary market to access liquidity for their investors because the traditional private equity exit routes um, currently are not providing the same level of opportunity. And so from our perspective, our outlook is that that will probably continue into 2024 because the underlying drivers um, for that deal flow coming into this market have not changed materially. So relative to LP-led strategies, GP-leds are much more concentrated and asset-led. Um, they basically involve backing a general partner to move its prized asset into a continuation vehicle that will give it longer duration and capital. Um, in terms of like the relative attributes, you know, compared to LP transactions, GP-led deals are typically much more concentrated with more back-ended cash flows. Because what you're doing when you participate in a GP-led transaction as a buyer is you're buying into that next leg of growth that that company has ahead of it. And so um, you don't expect the same level of distributions to be coming back uh, from day one in the way that you might when you buy a diversified portfolio of LP positions. Um, that said, what, what is kind of interesting is, well, in reality, we think that the return profile and the cash flow profile of GP-led transactions looks maybe more like a buyout fund, uh, but it has the same core risk mitigants that LP-led and regular way secondaries have as well. And that's like, we think about things like you're buying you know, an asset that you have high visibility into. It's mature at the time that you acquire it. And you're backing ultimately the same general partner and the same management team. Um, you're not changing completely the guard uh, with the new ownership structure. It's backing the same asset with the same management team and the same general partners. So in those ways, it has sort of some of the benefits of buyout and co-investment funds and strategies with the core risk mitigants that secondaries offers. So from our perspective, I would say three key things that we really focus on for GP-led transactions. Of course, there's more than these three, but these are, I think, three critical things that are really important. The first is uh, to have a strong transaction rationale from the general partner. Why are they bringing this asset into the market or this group of assets to the market? And why is a continuation vehicle the right technology for this company at this time? That's a cr critical question. If the rationale is we want to generate liquidity for our investors or you know, we're having trouble fundraising and we, we were trying to do a staple with, with this asset into our fundraise, those are our rationales that don't necessarily give us a ton of confidence. So understanding why, why the GP is bringing this asset to the continuation vehicle market is a critical thing to understand and get right. The second is alignment. Uh, alignment on two levels. First, with the general partner. Are they more of a buyer than a seller of this asset? Are they coming in to the continuation vehicle at our entry price as a, as a new buyer? Uh, and are they kind of bringing all their economics that they would have otherwise realized into the vehicle alongside of us? Are they putting new money in? Are they putting their new fund into the investment? How much do they believe and how much conviction do they have around the next leg of growth that I was talking about with this asset? That's what we try to understand through these alignment levers that I talked about. But also, we dig into alignment at the management company level. The, the management team that's responsible for the asset, how bullish are they on the next leg of growth for this asset? Are they taking money off the table? Those are some of the key items we really focus on on alignment. And the third thing is valuation. Um, you know, is the company overpriced? Is it reasonably priced? Um, has it been written up at, just before the transaction happens? Uh, a lot of time and effort is spent on transactions today, particularly over valuation. We're very bullish that the trophy asset story is, is here to stay. And we've seen consistently 
um, trophy assets being brought to the GP-led market over multiple years. You know, we've seen the actually the quality improve um, over time. In the beginning of the GP-led market, uh, in sort of you know 2013, if you want to go back, you know, 10 years, um, I think that the quality was more mixed. But from 2018, 2019, we've seen um, the highest quality sponsors bringing the highest quality assets. Now, to be fair, when we evaluate assets in the market, uh, we hear all the time that these are trophy assets and they're not always trophy assets. But um, the, the sort of the reality that every private equity fund, um, if, if they do a good job, they will have outperforming assets. And uh, that story of you know wanting to hold on to their best performing assets longer, give them more money and really maximize value over time, that's here to stay. And we, we've continued to see that quality bear out, even though there's been tons of transactions, more uh, competitors coming into the market. We think that this is actually a technology that, that is solving a problem that existed uh, before it was you know, available.